Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about covalent bonding, but a particular skill about covalent bonding of how to draw dot and cross diagrams. So there are a couple of little skills, a couple of bits of information we need to know before we get started, and that is covalent bonding occurs between non-metals, and also that covalent bonding involves sharing electrons. So now we have those key fundamental bits of information, let's get started. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a diagram to show how hydrogen bonds with chlorine. So what I'm doing right now is I'm drawing the outer shell of hydrogen and the outer shell of chlorine. Now hydrogen has only got one electron in total, so this is its first shell. Remember, any atom needs two electrons to fill up the first shell. Chlorine, this isn't its first shell. This is its outer shell. So it has seven electrons in that outer shell. It's in group seven of the periodic table. Now, hydrogen needs one more electron to have a full outer shell because this is the first shell and needs two to be full. Chlorine also needs just one more electron because it needs eight electrons in total to have a full outer shell. So we can see they both need one more electron to be stable. So they bond together, and this is how we draw it. Now what I'm gonna to do to begin with here is I'm just drawing the electrons that are not involved in the covalent bond on the chlorine. So there's the ones that aren't. And here's my hydrogen. Notice how I've drawn these two shells overlapping. Now in the middle, I'm drawing the pair of electrons which are being shared. One from the hydrogen and one from the chlorine. If we now count the electrons in each outer shell, so for chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so it's got a full outer shell. And for hydrogen, one, two, it's got a full outer shell. Please notice how I didn't draw the electron over here and I've drawn them in the middle because it shows that these electrons are being shared. Also notice the reason why it's called a dot and cross diagram is we always draw the electrons on one atom with dots, or sorry, with dots, and the other with a cross. This is just to show which atom the, they originally belong to. It, they, they're actually both still exactly the same. They're both just electrons. So the whole point of dot and cross is just showing which atom it belonged to originally. Now the other example I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do an oxygen molecule. So here we have oxygen which has um, six electrons in the outer shell. I didn't draw that very well, so I'm going to draw this one a bit better. There we go. So we can see that this oxygen atom needs two more electrons to have a full outer shell. And this oxygen atom also needs two more electrons to have a full outer shell. So they are going to share. This time, this one is going to share two with this oxygen, and this oxygen is going to share two with this oxygen. So let's draw them. So again, I've drawn these two atoms overlapping, just writing an O for oxygen in the middle. So we can see this time, there's two of those electrons are gonna be shared from this one, and two are gonna be shared from this one. So there's just the other electrons that make it up. So now if we count the electrons, we can see that this oxygen atom here now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so it's stable. And this oxygen atom here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so this is stable. So just to recap, the important things are, we know that this only occurs between non-metals and covalent bonding is sharing of electrons. We think, how many more electrons does your atom need to have a full outer shell? We draw the, the electrons from one atom with a cross, the other with a dot, to show that they're from different atoms. And we draw these electrons in the middle to show they're being shared. If we get all of that stuff right, we should be okay. Thank you.